So continuing on the uh, theme of very very basic biomechanic-y type videos, um, this one is going to be about axes, um, which follows on obviously from the one that I did about uh, moments. Um, we talked a lot about pivots, um, so it's probably best to do something just to describe those. Once again, um, this is going to be the very 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 basic version, so if you have even a passing familiarity with this, um, this video will be a waste of your time. Um, so, an axis, what is an axis? An axis is an imaginary line around which a body rotates. A um, couple of bits to uh, pay attention to in that definition. Firstly, that it is imaginary. An axis doesn't exist in space, it's not a thing that you can touch and feel and hold. Um, it is uh, a construct, an idea that we create. Um, and it's the line around which a body rotates. We find these all the time, everywhere in physics. Uh, the most common one that you'll be very familiar with already is, of course, a hinge. So if you consider this to be a door, this way around it's a door, um, and with the door it will rotate, it will open and close around a certain fixed point. This line here, that's the axis. That's the fixed point around which the body rotates. Um, now in this case, in a hinge, the hinge generally stays very, very put. Um, an axis can move. If the thing that the axis is in is moving, then an axis can move, but not relative to the body. So if this door was in a building and there's an earthquake going on, so the whole building is doing that, the axis of course is moving, it's not stationary in space, but from the perspective of the door, it's the same. It doesn't matter what the axis does, the door still rotates around it in exactly the same way. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, a, an axis is a fixed reference point, reference to the body that is rotating around it. Now this, um, this idea of a door, uh, you've got only one end of a lever. You've got a, a thing that comes outwards from the axis, but nothing on this side. A slightly more complex type of axial system uh, might be a seesaw. So once again, these very expensive props which I've been hours working on for you. So in a seesaw, you once again have a fixed axis. In this case, the fixed axis is a can of air freshener. Um, but again, it's a fixed point around which the seesaw rotates. But now we've made it slightly more complicated because we have a lever at either end. Um, with a lever at one end, you've only got one half of the system you can pull up or push down. With the axis in the middle, you can work from either end. You can push down or up from that end, and you can push down or up from that end. That makes it slightly more complex, um, but only slightly. Now, when you have an axis in the middle of a system, um, with a, the lever extending in either direction, it introduces um, the element of uncertainty in terms of where that axis is. So, just to demonstrate that a little more fully. Let's say there's the axis and we want to know where the axis is. Now, if the axis is the fixed point around which the body rotates, we can actually find where the axis is by the point where the body doesn't rotate. In other words, if I push there, a long way away from the axis, I'll get movement. And if I push there, a long way away from the axis, I'll get movement. The closer I get to the axis, the more difficult it is to move, and the less movement you'll get, until you're actually right on the axis. And if you push right on an axis, then you don't get any rotation. So if I put that in the middle, if I push that side of it, it will move. If I push that side of it, it will move. If I push right on where the axis is, it doesn't move. So the name for that is a point of no rotation, or PNR is the abbreviation you'll very often see. And we use PNRs to actually find where an axis is. Remembering that, generally speaking, an axis is an invisible line, it's an imaginary line, not um, an arrow. If we move to the point, if we find the point of no rotation, and we find one there, 
then we can put a marking on that to show us where that is. Then we find another point of no rotation. There. And we put another point of no rotation there. We can draw a line between those two points of no rotation. And we then know that that is the axis. It's the line at which any point on that line, if I press it, I'm not going to get any movement because this is the line around which the body rotates. If I go away from that line, I'll get movement. On that line, on the axis, you get no rotation. So if we flip that round this way, see how seamlessly I work that in there, and consider this foot as an ankle joint. So we're imagining that this that line, this arrow, is the axis of the ankle joint, the talocrural joint. We can do one of two things. If we push down on the heel, we will get foot uh, plantar flexion. If we push up under the forefoot, of course, we will get foot dorsiflexion. But there will be a point somewhere between those where when we push, we don't actually get any rotation at all. And that would be there. So when I push on that point, that's a point of no rotation. We know that the axis goes through that point somewhere. So I can put an X there. Of course, in real life, an ankle doesn't have this bloody great arrow. In, in this example, that gives you a clue. Um, if we go on this side, once again, movement, 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 a little bit of movement, no movement. So we know that that's a point of no rotation. So I can do... X there, draw a dotted line between those X's, and of course, if I've done this right, you will notice that that dotted line follows our axis. This is our talocrural joint axis. This is the point at which the talocrural joint doesn't rotate. If an axis is an imaginary line around which a body rotates, when you push on that line, the body will not rotate. The more useful axis for us to find, and the one that uh, we will very often use in clinical assessment, because it's relevant, if I can find meow, meow, there we go, is a subtalar joint axis. If we have a foot standing up like that, so this is facing you on the couch, if you push under the arch, the foot will supinate, and if you push under the lateral side of the foot, the foot will pronate. So if we've got the foot pronating and supinating, it's rotating, and if it's rotating, it's rotating around an axis. It's a body rotating around an imaginary line. So we can actually try and find that imaginary line. And the way we would do this is no different to how we found the ankle joint. We would work our way across until we find the line, the point rather, where it doesn't rotate. So that in that case is there, um, so we draw a little X there. Now you can do the same on the foot, on the rear foot to find the uh, the point of no rotation, but generally speaking, because the subtalar joint axis passes through the subtalar joint, and that's fairly predictable. You'll find it very slightly lateral um, to the centre of the heel, so you can do it all the way down, or you can do it like that. And then if we draw our line between those two points. That theoretically should be our subtalar joint axis. This should be the axis around which the subtalar joint rotates. So anything that pushes up there will supinate the foot. Anything that pushes there will pronate the foot. What you will find is that feet have very variable subtalar joint axes. Um, so if we, for example, put the subtalar joint axis there, which will be a very, very deviated subtalar joint axis. Now, all of a sudden, when you push there, it pronates the foot. When you push under the arch, it still pronates the foot. The only place to supinate the foot is that side. So if we try and find our point of no rotation, we work our way up and across until we find, a little bit of movement there, only a little bit, until we find the point where the foot doesn't rotate, find the same down there, 
looking for the point of no rotation. So that axis should be about that sort of line. So in this foot with a very deviated axis, you'll get pronation force from anything that side of the axis, supination force from anything that side of the axis. That's obviously relevant from an orthotic manufacture point of view because when we make an orthotic, uh, all an orthotic can do is push. Uh, it cannot hold, all it can do is push. Um, and it will push up or up at an angle, but that's another video, somewhere on the sole of the foot. So if we know where the subtalar joint axis is, if we know the line, then we know that by and large stuff on that side of the axis will create one effect, stuff on that side of the axis will create another effect. Um, and that changes how an insole will work. That's why insoles are very subject specific in terms of their effect. Um, you can have the same insole on two different people. Um, if you've got a person with a foot an axis like this and you put a lump that pushes straight up there, that will pronate the foot. Um, the same lump on a person who's got the more sort of average subtalar axis there will supinate the foot. So when somebody asks you the question, what does an orthotic do, especially if it's a prefab, you can answer, of course, very smugly that it is subject specific. It depends on lots of things, including where the subtalar joint axis is. This has been helpful. If you have any other suggestions or requests, let me know.